you got there? A nice little bass on the Super Shad. Well, a little about that. Good job. Who painted that Super Shad? I did. All right. What color is that supposed to be? It's supposed to be a war bonnet shad. All right. Super Shad. Let's take the hook out of him. <laughs> We're back, regular viewers. Sort of. Had to fix the table there. Anyway, look at how much cleaner that is. Yes. Maybe we need to clean this rag. Maybe that'll make all the difference, huh? What do you think? I think so, too. Think that'll fix all our problems with this tabletop? Maybe. Probably not. Anyway, so this week we are going to talk about this mold right here. This was a creation made by me which was a it's a shad style i was a texas rig lure that you made out of what play-doh play-doh that's when we made the super when i made the super shad you were making this guy right here we made a quick top pour mold of it and um yeah and um yeah, we made a couple plastics for him out of it but then i had an idea the other day and i poured lead in it and i got this well, I guess technically this. Um, and I was like, wait a second, we can make ourselves a beach lure. We like to go to the beach in the summer and uh, try to catch some of the fish out there, a lot of Spanish mackerel -y type stuff. Um, and you end up losing a lot of lures. So I was like, well, we can make a, a piece of lead that'll cast out 100 miles. And, um, and if it gets cut off, it was quick, dirty, and cheap, right? Clicked, yes. all, the, clicked all the boxes, or checked all the boxes rather and uh we can use it and lose it so that's what we're going to make today so let's get out our we're going to need for this project we're going to need some wire here we've got our uh the main line hard wire again the coffee color because fish love coffee this is the 331 pound test remember it's that one pound that makes all the difference okay um the previous one i don't know why i took that out i spooled it up just to not do that and i was like hey regular guy it'll be much nicer if you don't take it out of the bag all the way and i spent all that time re-spooling it just to do it again craziness huh yes crazy. okay we're gonna just go ahead and pretend that didn't happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just like that never happened because i was professional the whole time so Let's go ahead and cut this right off like that. We also need one uh, barrel swivel. On the prototype, I had put a swivel on both ends, but I think that made the lure too long because when I put the, the test hook on here, now it's like, we're talking like over an inch away from the lure. Um, so I don't think I want to do that. So we're just going to leave it on the back. Uh, I'm sorry, on the front, okay? Because it does need a swivel because it will spin around like crazy, I'm sure, and uh, cause a mess. But, so anyway, let's go with making this part here. Put the swivel on it, like so. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. If I could only see it. How do you know if it's beautiful if you can't see it? Okay, I'm gonna twist this around once. Oops, that's ugly. Twice. There you go. Okay. And then we're gonna cut it off. Just like that. Just like that. I can usually, I don't know why on camera I can't make them tighter than that, but anyway so we're going to put that in there but we want it down the bottom of this mold so right here we're going to twist it down 90 degrees go the distance of the uh the pliers there and that's going to make this little jog here so it's down at the bottom of the mold so we're going to measure our distance on this end same deal except opposite it might help to use the flat pliers instead of the wire pliers. We lost our distance again. Holy smokes. Okay, there we go. Just like that. Sort of, but different. But the same, but regular. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. So now we've got the jog in it that's going to help it stay down. And the reason I say that is um, when we go to pour this in the mold, we're going to use our friend flathead screwdriver here to hold it down for just a moment while the lead is cooling because otherwise this coffee flavored wire will float up. So, and that's no good. All right, we're going to tie our, hello, our loop in the back end here. That's a much better twist. Look at that. See, I can do a regular job on camera, believe it or not. Okay. So now that we've got this situated, we are going to go over there to the, uh, to the regular workbench, um, and, um, pour the lead in this. So we're going to need eyes and gloves for this one. Um, remember to wear gloves. I did get myself a little wounded here. Not from the lead pot though, but uh, from working without gloves on. So always important to take the time to put the gloves back on your hands. Okay, we got our lead pot hot. I'm using another piece of a mold just to kind of hold this in place so that I don't have to actually hold the, uh, the fish mold up here. So I'm gonna hold that wire down like so and just fill our mold up here. Oop, got a little away from me. Okay, so I cool a second. I should be just fine. So now that that's poured, we're just going to let it cool for a while before we mess with it at all. That's a lot, of, uh, it's a pretty good amount of lead. So we don't want it to, uh, we don't want to be playing with it right now because it's going to take quite a while to cool off. It's got a nice wiggle. I'm, in, I'm, I'm enjoying how it swims. What do you think? You like it? I like it. That is going to catch me a big fish at All the right. beach. So uh, we're going to put some, uh, we're going to go back to the regular shop now and uh, try to put some lipstick on this pig. And uh, I'm thinking we're going to do a glitter paint job to it. I think that'll probably be the best way to smooth it out and make it look nice and, uh, and flashy. So, all right. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Okay, we are back. The swim test went perfect. Better than expected, in fact. Um, I, I really liked how that swam, so we're gonna get to uh, painting these up here. So the regular assistant is gonna take these hooks off, uh, the split ring and the hook. You know how to do that? Uh, yes, sir. And get it done. Okay, you take those over there. So this has cooled, as uh, obviously as evidenced by, I grabbed it there, and uh, came right out of the mold, so perfect. And again, this one, I only put the swivel on the front and uh not on the back here i didn't think it needed it because the hook got a little too far away so i think three of these guys will be enough they're about uh two ounces which is pretty heavy uh in a small package but uh that's probably uh good for what we're trying to do here which is cast out in a uh, very windy gulf of mexico so yikes you okay uh yeah i'm fine i just cannot Get this okay. to go. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, I'm going to go get the supplies we need for the next part of the project. All right, so we're ready to uh, try and paint our fish. I got some sort of water-based glue here for this project. I'm going to paint these with uh, glitter, with a glitter pattern using this water-based glue. I've demonstrated this before, um, and uh, the video really didn't do so hot, but um, people did ask for it, so I'm going to show it again. Uh, here because I think this is an appropriate way to these uh, are kind of lumpy on the other side whatever they didn't come out so hot 
and in all reality uh, those of you that fish the beaches we have the Spanish mackerel down here there's a good chance these won't last terribly long um, with those sort of toothy critters so basically this is the bottom of the fish I'm gonna take my glue I want it mostly silver I know that's a shock to everybody that watches this channel and never used this stuff before just found it in my kids art supplies so we're gonna try it out i don't mind thank you i'm glad you don't mind so there we go put that down oops then we take our plate here As you can see, it sticks to where the glue was. Shake it off, and there we got a spackly fish, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do a shad dot on it. So you go ahead, and uh, these are the colors over here you got to work with. So just take your time. Small, less is more situation here. Okay. Okay. Yes. Oh well, we can make that work. There goes that brush off into oblivion. That's professionalism. Just trying to fill that hole with the glue. Oh, don't worry about that. Oops. Ah. Okay. Will... That didn't work out so hot. Uh, try to do it over the plate for me, buddy. Oh uh, yes, sir. Remember we talked about that part. That was like the beginning of it. Yes, sir. Like right in the beginning. In the beginning, we said over the plate. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's, yes, that beginning too. <laughs> not not quite that beginning. The beginning was, of this. Just got to make sure we don't destroy. Oh, no. Don't destroy the fish. Don't destroy um, the fish. Yes. That's a good advice right there. All right, I'm going to put some more of that water-based glue up here. I just want to try like a uh, shad pattern, threadfin shad. Maybe. Oh, that's the one I'm looking for. That's the one I'm looking for. Is that the dark blue? Oh, good. That's the night sky blue. That's what I'm trying to say. This is night sky blue? Yeah. That's really specific. Okay, let's see that. Okay. Let's see that. All right. Just see. Try not to get it everywhere over the fish. And I want to spread that on the top. And yet, yeah. Just look at all the mess I've just made. You're doing it over the plate? <laughs> oh, great. And I just ruined the fish. You ruined the fish? How'd you ruin the fish? Dark blue got everywhere. It's okay. Here, let's get the uh, this area real quick. There we go. There we are. Thank you. All right. Shake it um, off over the plate a little bit. Very important to cover up your glitter. Oh, good. We lost both brushes into oblivion. Oh, good. Look at that. Just to make sure that we get... Okay. Get a look at that red over there. Hold your horses, kiddo. Open that. No, that's more. Why am I looking at? Why do I? I got looking. You grabbed the copper fish. there. Okay, we got to uh, kind of retool here, so we'll be right back while we try and look for our uh, brushes. All right, I put a pair of vice grips on here, which I should have done in the first place. But as I was telling you, uh, some of the old uh, lure patterns, they'd have something like that on the one side, and then this side would be all like one color, like red something uh, really to stand out. So if you want to try that, because I know oh. red is your favorite color. Okay, that was completely unnecessary. I was just trying to. Okay, um, yeah. Pause for a moment. Okay, so just put the, just dip a little bit of the brush in, please. Dip, dip. Okay, do you see where it exists in space? Right oh, here. Oh, now I see. Okay, let's try this one more time. <laughs> one more time. <clears throat> so the bristles are generally the part that you want, and only about half of them. Okay. There we are. That worked much, much better. 
Have okay, it so out. I'm going to try and repeat the same pattern that I did last time. We're going to start this time with the chartreuse line, though. Okay. Without hitting my hand, it would be a lot easier. And remember, you're going to pour the glitter over the what? The fish. And the plate. Yes. Is the is what the judges were looking for at home. They make it look like a Christmas fish. Like a Christmas fish. Um, that was a not... lot of sparkles. Or we could do like a Valentine's Day since there it's getting you go, close. For Valentine's Day. Yeah. Did you get enough sparkles? I got my name for a while. That's enough. That was more than enough, in fact. More than enough. Okay. Bad. All right. It wasn't bad. And again, you put your brush down there. So now we've got a glittered brush. Okay. Okay. All right. Before we've got too far out of control. So that's a good job with your fish. We're going to hang it up on the magnet and let this glue dry. Okay? Yes, sir. I was thinking maybe we could put a googly eye on the one side. What do you think? Uh, great. Or you could put a cat's eye. You could put a cat's eye on yours on the one side. Huh. Okay, so let's try that. I'll put a spot of more glue. Whenever my uh, stuff dries, I'm going to try to do like a gill pattern. Right there. Well, once you kind of do it, it's kind of did. So we're kind of got what we got at this point. There we Just go. Just look at yours, beautiful. Little googly eye. The regular okay. grandfather, when he caught that big redfish on the rattle trap, he made the eye all of glitter. I did all that. Oh, I did you? that, colored that for him, yeah. So he asked me to color his lures for him, okay. All right, so you wanna put that cat's eye on this side? Actually, we should do it on the other side. You don't want it on that side? I thought it would stick out more over here. Nah, it's stick no, it sticks out on the other side. I don't think so. The other okay. side would be it's your lure, buddy. Let's do that. And then I uh, will put what's that. I wanna make it look like a live fish. Oops. Try not to get it everywhere. Like I just did right there. <sighs> not perfect, but we got it on okay. there. Okay, well when we put the clear coat over it, it will uh it will uh, kind of take away that imperfection there as well. So that's pretty good. That's what I've got going. That is a, a big eyed fish, huh? Uh huh. The one big eye. Look at that. It looks good. Okay. Yeah. According to the bottle, this stuff only takes 20 minutes to dry. So we'll see if that's true. Okay. What are we going to do for this guy here? Um, we got the gold. We could do some gold. That's not gold. I could find it. Now for my next trick, I will find the gold. Sounds like one of those shows from Alaska. Mm. Gold is very valuable. Hmm. Can't find it. Okay. That's what we've got. We've got this one here. Okay. So we can do a gold and silver fish. Gold and silver is very valuable. Gold is more valuable. But so we'll go this way with it here. Okay, watch this, buddy. Watch this. Why gold medal is for first place. Okay. Hmm? Awesome. And then the rest is all silver. Cover that up for me before I inevitably knock it over. And then the glitter gets everywhere. Yes. And then it'll be a part of the regular set until forever. Look at this, regular viewers. Did you call it clean sweep? Okay. Okay, we got that. And now let's get out that silver again that I shouldn't have put away because we're still using it. Yes. We're just trying to find something extremely flashy and fish shape shaped fish shaped fish 
fish shaped. Fish yeah, I can't shaped. say shape. There we go. Okay. Fish shape. Fish Wowzers. Shape. There we go. That that's better. Okay, we'll give this guy a red chin <clears throat> on his chinny chin chin. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Or as the uh, real story from the wolf side is. Um, what was it? I don't know. Okay. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. That's what it was. And it goes to the same. Gold on there. Ready? Oh, doing the other side. Doing the other side, yes. Okay, that looks pretty shiny, I think. So we'll let that glue dry and we'll put an eye on it. And then to seal these, we're just going to use two part epoxy. But I think that's a pretty shiny fish for the five minutes this will last with the Spanish mackerels out there. So hopefully they'll enjoy it up to that point. Look at how clean that is now. So while we're waiting, I just wanted to show you on our last fishing trip, as I told you, keep your eyes up or down. We got two free lures out of the trip. We got another Whopper Plopper that somebody bought instead of making it out of a hairbrush. Jeez, I guess they're not watching my videos. And we got a nice jig right here with a soft plastic that is, uh, well, yeah, that one's pretty well gone. I don't know if I can remelt that guy. But this will clean up nice here. We could, uh, we'll redo the head on it. Uh, it looks like the skirt is still in pretty good shape. So I think just running this, uh, giving this a good old washing, both these lures, and they'll be brand new again. So remember, guys, keep your, uh, keep your head down looking for free lures out there. It's a regular way to restock your tackle box on the cheap. And um, if you do, you know, um, you know, if your soft plastics go bad or something like that in your boat, keep them in your boat and throw them out when you get home if you're not going to do the remelts. Don't just toss them on the shore because I see those all the time. And just remember, it's those kind of things that get the uh, officials to shut down our public fishing areas, uh, which is happening more and more because uh, some fishermen are pigs and ruin it for the rest of us. So You said that in one of the videos. Thank you. Let's get this properly cleaned off here, okay? Yeah. So now we're going to finish these guys by putting a nice clear coat on them. And uh, I guess these things didn't really work out too hot, but um, they are holding it though. So you're uh, you're gonna hold this here. Yes, sir. Okay. Here's your lure there. Put the brushes down so you have two hands. Okay. Hold these guys. All right. Let's get out our JV welds here. It smells like a skunk. Oops. Okay, mix this up for us. Probably gonna need more than that. So we'll start out by doing two of them. You do yours and I'll do that other one you're holding right there. Yes, sir. Okay, so we mix it, it gets cloudy, then it kind of clears up again, and that's when you know it's mixed all the way. So we're gonna take this. This one is gonna be a little difficult because of that shaggy stuff, but okay. Just take it and start going. So that one looks like we got everything. So let me go hang this up and I'll be right back there. So we'll go uh, hang this guy up. That you would want them just in one area there. And the reason I like to use these brushes is because it helps me without having to touch the lure to see if they're dry, if the epoxy is dry. Because these brushes were pretty inexpensive. And then uh, you can see if the epoxy is dried properly without, inevitably you're gonna wanna touch the lure. But this way you can ensure that it hasn't been, uh, that it's been fully cured before you put your hand on it. Okay, so hold the googly-eyed one there, please. Yes, sir. This one's a really funny one. Pro tip with this, before uh, before you go and do that, you know, take it somewhere and shake it <laughs> to make sure that the uh, if there's any loose glitter, that, uh, that I, it's going to fall off. That I made a mistake. Well, no, you had that was very fine glitter, so it's really hard to make it all adhere. See, that one pulled off a bunch of sparkles there, too. You see that down in the... Puddle. Yeah, that's a lot of them. And that's okay. In this case, the Spanish mackerel won't notice. Mostly because they'll already have cut it off. 
Well, of course, he was a wire leader on these, so we try not to lose them, but sometimes that happens still. Okay, I think that's thoroughly slathered. If we had a slather scale, I think that would be thoroughly, thoroughly slathered. Okay, so we'll hang that guy up. We're back here, and we are still working on our saltwater uh, lead lure. So they have dried. Again, we checked the plate here before we touched the lure, and I had done that. Everything is all sticky. But what is this I found? That is the original mold master I made out of Play-Doh. Play-Doh mold master, huh? And then we made a plaster mold of that. Right? Yes, sir. We made this plaster mold right here. This is it, folks. Yep, which we have been pouring these lead fish out of. So our fish have dried. They've got the sparkle sparkles all over them and the epoxy all over them. This one's got googly eyes, right? <laughs> so, all right. Um, this is yours. Show off yours here. This with one. A nice cat's eye on that side. Yep. This one's a mm -hmm. USA colored Yep, lure. it's all red on the other side like he's having a really bad day. And uh, this was a silver and gold with a red chin, red eyes. And what did you say this color was? The uh, war bonnet. War bonnet, which is the what? Red, silver, and yellow paint yeah, but what, what is war bonnet? What's that? Of from? the Santa Fe. Santa Fe? All right. So, okay. So, pal, the next step is this one here has got a little drippy dew on it. Um, what we have to do here is cut this off. Ba ding Gone forever, right? Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Ba -ding. Ba ding Okay. So, they had some drippy dews on them, but that's okay. I did end up cutting off the um, um, the barrel swivels on the uh, on the tail end there because it was making the lure too long. Because we're going to still have to put a split ring on it and um, and a hook, so that's still going to be back a little ways. But that'll be okay. So we're going to move over here to the um, fly tying bench and make the hooks for it. All right? Yes, sir. Okay, so we need to make the back hooks for this. We're going to use VMCs. Uh, four times strong king uh, kingfish. I don't get. Is it four times stronger than four kingfish? What's going? On? I don't I, know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, but these are number four size uh, stainless hooks here. So, or not stainless, but saltwater rated hooks. I don't use the stainless hooks because I do want them to rot out of the fish, uh, the fish's mouth, after a while. So we'll make three of those. So we're going to show you how to do that here. So we'll clamp this guy in like so turn on our work light Ooh, shine some light on the situation is that better yeah that's way better all right so this is more of a tutorial for my younger or for my eldest regular assistant uh than it is for other folks but just real quick this is how you start your fly tying wrap see i'm holding the string out and i'm going around it now it's more difficult on a treble hook because you got three times the things to worry about but now we can just take this here and cut off this little bit of string, okay? Yes, sir. So uh, we're going to get our fly tying material and come up with the pattern that we want to use for that, all right? All right. Okay, so I've got my super glue with its little tiny adapt uh, applicator thingy, funnel squeezy thing, and just put a little bit of glue on there. Okay, so this is going to be a very simple pattern. I have my uh, dyed deer, deer tail. And uh, I just want a little bit of that. Whoops. And stick it to your finger so that you lose the unnecessary amount of it. That's always a, a good way to start. And then your wrap looks all messed. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Way to make that a mess, regular guy. Okay, so that first wrap goes up and over and then like kind of loose like that. And then you pull it tight down, okay? So we're just going to walk back this string, like so. And we're holding it tight to the hook, so that this is going to hold on strong. And we'll go back the other way, that's far enough. And then to tie it off, I'm doing a loop, I'm passing it through the loop, right? Well, that's an easy right? knot. Loop, pass it through the loop. We're going to do this a number of times, five or six or so. And that's just to hold the string in place, okay? Good. Wind up your bobbin. 
You don't ever want your bobbin unwound. Yes, that would be horrible. That'd be horrible. Cut that off. Look at that. And we're just going to do a couple drops of super glue to hold that. It's going to solidify that string. That's awesome. And that's that, buddy. Okay. So what we're going to do here is come in on this side and trim this excess off. So like that never happened, right? And you can get super fancy with this um, if you want to, but we're trying not to take away from the overall look of the whole lure. And we're only going to want it that long, just like that. That is beautiful. Okay? And this little guy that didn't want to get involved on it, we'll cut him off too. And that guy there. So, all right. All Super right. easy. I'll tie one more of those. And then uh, then you're going to tie yours. All right? All right. All right. Second verse, same as the first. Look at Gonzo's. that. Now that is beautiful. Like I said, I know it's not a lot of stuff on there, but that's all we need. And while we're here at the Vice, we're not going to do it now, but... I need some more weedless jig heads. Uh, we have plum run out, and uh, this was an example of one I made in a very one of our earlier videos. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. Easy way to make weedless jig heads, cheap and easy way. We're going to use this jig head here, and we're going to use 40 pound test. Uh, it's the 0 .013 diameter uh, wire. Again, coffee flavored, because I guess the bass like that. And uh, but again, go check out that video if you want to see how to make these jig heads weedless for a short money. So put it on and go over it. Go right up here to the eye of like oh. that. So start over. Good. Right there. Good. Okay. But watch that hook. Yes. Sir. Okay. Now start working it down towards the towards the uh, shank of the hook there. All right. Towards the bend. A little bit harder than I expected. It's okay. Don't pull it that hard. Just relax. So now let's get your. Um, deer hair. Deer You're hair. using the orange deer um, tail. Maybe we can. Yep. SP Daylight Orange. That's what I call it. SP Daylight Orange. What's that? Southern Pacific Daylight Orange. So we just need a very little bit of it here. So. Cut that off. Yep. Uh, close to the close to the hide. Oops. Use the bottom of the scissors. Remember? Oh, I didn't know deer hair was so hard to cut. Good job. Have a, your thumb up. We did have a slight thumbs up. There thumbs we go. Up. Okay, so here they are, all done. We've got three uh, very inexpensive lures for the beach. This was all from your little uh, you know, mold master, mold master, master that you made for me out of play doh. We made the mold of it. Got a little bit of wire leader, <laughs> and uh, this stuff right here. Coffee flavored again. Coffee flavored, 131 pound test mainline. And uh, with some sparkles and JB and Weld, a little bit of deer hair and super glue, whammo slammo. We've got three beach lures uh, to use this summer here uh, down at the beach and most likely lose. But that'll be okay because it was super easy to make. So did you have fun? I had make great fun. All right. Last thing, we're going to go just do a swim test to see how they look with all the pretty colors on them. All right? All right. Good work. Nice and shiny, huh? In the sun there? Sparkles came out great. Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>